<clears throat> All right, so let's have a look. Here we go, folks. Greetings, dear Aries. That's you. This is Terra Illumination. This is your love and relationship mini kind of generic report for what we call May 2018. Okay, do the routine. You know how it all works. Everything's broken up into the zodiac signs for whatever reason. It's a convention. It seems to work. So watch for your sun, moon, and rising because those are in day-to-day -day terms the most significant parts of your uh, how you feel like your life works out, how it appears to be. So allow for that. We're going to use the crucible spread, okay, for this love and relationship reading on the understanding that there's you, Aries, a significant other, and the relationship itself, a third entity that has had its own life and energy and identity, which needs to be acknowledged and understood, especially in a really loving, healthy relationship. The relationship itself is the structure where you invest everything. You don't relate one-on-one. -on -one. You relate through the relationship. Okay, and you invest in the relationship. Also, for singles, you can watch this if you want to, if you extrapolate the laws of attraction on the understanding that you're always pulsing out energy like a cell phone that's always switched on, and then uh, consequently, you are going to attract something in return, whatever that might be. So, you could call this card over here, these cards over here, the energy of what if, or who might that be, or what might they be like, and so on. So cards were well shuffled in advance. I'm going to keep going to the last second so that you're a witness. I'm going to give you some astrology notes in just this moment because I had to do it for every sign because May is such a significant month. Because of Uranus moving into Taurus right on the Taurus new moon. So, you know, it doesn't hit you directly in love and relationship, but it's such a big deal. We have to mention it as a calendar moment anyway. So there we go. There we go. Aries, May 2018. These are just my personal notes. So coming out of April and for the first two weeks of May, you had that Scorpio moon in the Taurus sun right at the very last tail end of April. So that's going to have like uh, a wave effect for the first two weeks of the month. Okay. And you can't get out of it, so you might as well just try and figure out what it all means. My guess is that it's going to be something to do with uh, intimacy, the intimacy of a relationship. And what is happening to you, inside of you, at the very depths of your being when it comes to the intimacy of a relationship? We know what we're talking about here, okay? And so because all the energy is shifting into Taurus now anyway, that's your second house of value and values, worth, what's worth. Things like money. What is what? What's the money like between you and a significant other? What is the intimacy or the physical intimacy like between you and a significant other? What is it that you really value now? What is it that they value in you that is being reflected back to you? What is so valuable in you that you are learning through the significant other? The Scorpio energy up in that house. Remember, Jupiter is still there. Jupiter in Scorpio retrograde is still there. So you might be still doing a lot of learning and understanding. Jupiter, very healing energy in itself. Scorpio, probably the most powerful healing energy in terms of transformational energy healing. And that's right at you in your eighth house. This is the energy of what happens inside a relationship. Okay. So that's going on anyway. But the key date here is uh, going to be, I didn't mark it. Excuse me. Pardon me. May 15th, okay? May 15th is the big day of the month. It's just another day on the calendar of the whole planet, but it's a significant day, May 15th, because we have the Taurus new moon. Oh, there's the date. And we have Uranus moving into Taurus more or less of the same day. So that's huge life-changing events happening here. It's a seven-year journey marked off as the starting day is May 15th. Now, of course, there's a lot of other things that are going to happen over the seven years, and it's always going to be triggered every year at this time, roughly for you. But it's going to mean very unpredictable, radical shifts and changes in what you value, how you value yourself, uh, your skills and your talents, and what is it that you value and others value in you at the most infinite intimate level of shared resources. When you share your body with them, they share your body with you, and so on. Let's have a look. Let's get into the cards. Come on, people. Let's just do this. 
sorry. It just took a long time. I had to get that out there. Please forgive me. I know you just want to see the cards and get on with it. All right? Cards were well shuffled in advance. No jumpers, no flyers, no oracles, no reversals, none of it. The cards are beautiful the way they're originally painted. I don't like to look at paintings upside down. Here we go. Okay, we are. Please give me a moment here. Please, please invite your angels to share this reading with you. Tarot Illumination angels are here. We're ma making this a team effort, okay? So let's. Let's break this up big time. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is going to be symbolic of the energy that you're radiating, love and relationship energy, like the pulsing heart. Doom, 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 doom. Over here, the same for the significant other or the potential what if person, mate, whoever. Over here, the deep in the soul of you deep in the soul of the other, and then the core itself, the relationship, okay? So there you can see the crucible. The crucible is the structure. It is, a, it is like a bowl in which a, a healthy, loving relationship, you can intimate and separate to the extremes of joy and sorrow, and joy and sorrow, or sorrow and joy, however, you, however it works out for you guys, uh, without everything falling apart, knowing that you have what's called a relationship, okay? And you invest in that. And this would be the prospects and the momentum going forward, perhaps in a timely manner. You know, maybe towards the end of the month we might feel this. Who knows? We're going to look at the weather, circumstantial energy, and you, Aries, like the rest of us, are going to make the best of it. Okay? You have to. There's no choice. All right? So you have the Four of Cups. Now, with the Four of Cups here, my feeling is that you might be starkly aware that there are big changes coming for you in that department of your life. It's a very particular part of life where you you feel it, you know, you feel it in the wallet. You feel it in your your value and your values and how you bring value to earth and how other people bring value to you. So there's going to be a lot of shifts and changes here. And you might be sensing that there are irreversible changes and you've lived a very significant life journey just to get to this point and you're getting a wave or a whiff of sentimentality as you ponder everything and anything that you've done wrong and how it went wrong and why it went wrong and to the point where it's a little bit overwhelming for you it doesn't have to be this way it's just that you're being absorbed by it because it's so significant right now because it's inevitable that it's going to change and you're going to inevitably have to refocus your attention onto what really counts, which is the love that you have here in front of you right now. So with this card, I always feel the energy of uh, understanding that energy flows where attention goes. So if your energy is, con if you insist on focusing on could have, would have, should have, and what was, and if only, if only, if only, then you'll stay stuck in woe is me and the doldrums, not figuring out what to do, and you'll miss the opportunity. But that's not going to happen because you, there's, you can't get out of this journey that we've just described here with this, with this thing going on here, May 15th. There's no turning back. So eventually you're going to feel the pressure to focus on, well, what does love really mean? What is the love that I have now? Okay, it's, That's what's going to happen. So let's have a look at you. What's going on? Okay. So it, to me, it feels like you have every reason to be apprehensive here. You might be quaking in your boots at the sensation of what is unfolding in front of you or what you might sense is unfolding, especially at the very early part of May. The first, let's say, put the first two weeks of May, you might feel very, let's say, intimidated to the point where there's no way I'm going to say or do anything that has any kind of consequence at all because... It feels too precarious. It feels like there's too much of a transition period going on where if you choose to do this now and exclude that, you may regret it later. If you choose to do this now and exclude that, you may regret that later. So it might be a good idea to decide not to decide. So you might be deliberately holding yourself in a very kind of gentle, serene posture where you're deliberately deciding not to decide and just being very, very patient as this energy unfolds and just allowing things to unfold naturally without you getting sucked into it uh, so that by the end of the month, uh, 
you'll have a like a, a clearer idea of what's going on. In other words, if you think of it as a funnel in a doorway where there's no going back, like when they move cattle through one of those loading things to get on a truck, you can't get out of it. So it's better just to get relaxed and calm and just go into it, go with the flow. You're going to be led into a new world, okay? So that's probably a really healthy posture to have, a good attitude to have, very defensive, uh, decisively defensive, deciding not to decide in order just to get through the process here. In other words, there's no tr point from your perspective right now trying to figure it out or make decisions. No, I actually want to go that way. Or no, I actually want to go that way and be this how way and this how with this love relationship. But no, it should be that way. No. It looks like you're deliberately, deliberately posturing is and just letting it flow. How about the other? Okay. Well, you might be dealing with another who's actually kind of excited about all this, and they might see something wonderful for themselves, and they might be so eager to shout about it and tell the whole world, and it's maybe just absolutely wonderful the way it's unfolding according to their perspective, and they're not maybe taking full consideration of the bigger picture, okay? There's, I mean, it's, it's I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you, Aries, to have this for you, it's just a little bit over the top, and it's almost like the energy of someone who's a little bit too eager to get with you because they see something wonderful that you might be aware of, but you're not seeing it in detail yet or feeling it because you will need to know it for real. Aries, very much about the body. You need to feel it and know it in your body, and that's not going to happen overnight just on May 15th. You're not going to experience a whole seven-year journey just compressed into the last two weeks of May. It's a long unfolding journey. So it feels to me that you, Aries, are deliberately posturing yourself to take things very patiently and very slowly. And you happen to be uh, relating with someone who is very eager to get on with it because they see the, the potential for themselves, new truths, new awakenings unfolding for themselves, which is fine. It might not be very romantic, but, you know, you're living through the situation. All relationships have their, you know, moods and vibes and feels moment by moment by moment. They shift and change, just like auras, constantly shifting and changing. Nothing is ever locked in. What about deep in the soul of you? Okay, well, I guess that you're feeling it. I think this is very much to do with the scorpionic energy up here right now. So let's focus tighter into the month itself here, right now, here in May. At the very beginning, the first two weeks, you might be dealing with the after effects of the Taurus Scorpio full moon we just talked about earlier. Okay, And it's deeply transformational, deep transformational healing at the soul level through the process of deep intimacy. In other words that Marvin Gaye song or whatever it is, but it's a very old song about sexual healing and things like that. And also how the, how, how merging like deep soul merger between yourself and a significant other, uh, literally sharing resources, bodily resources, financial resources, physical resources, uh, like a joint partnership. It, it's inevitably going to have deep transformational effects on you irreversible and there's no point in trying to fight it please it feels to me like your soul knows this deep inside your soul might be quaking and shaking and deliberately posturing to not do anything at the moment to let things unfold so that you get a better understanding and idea of how does this actually translate into English language that you can understand and then describe it to yourself like, oh, well, this is what's happening to me and that's what's happening to me in the context of my love life. It's going to be deeply transformational, but it might happen in kind of like very unpredictable, shocking ways. OK, you still got Jupiter and Scorpio up here at the same time that we've got Uranus moving into Taurus. So you've got these uh, big planets opposing each other in this very sensitive part of your chart. There's no way out of it. It is going to be transformational, radically transformational. If you want to combine it, Uranus and Jupiter and Scorpio over there, radically transformational to you, Aries, at the gut of your soul. 
typically that would imply healing as well. I see the death card is, includes a lot of healing. I don't want to emphasize that right now. Oh, I'd like to go into that in a minute. Let's have a look. What about deep inside of them? Well, you have the Wheel of Fortune here for your other. So they might feel as though they're kind of on this journey with you, kind of in a fated way that, well, it's just, in some ways, I feel like they feel very, very lucky, very fortunate. Like this couldn't be better as far as they're concerned. And they're very eager to, let's say, bring some clarity to all this for their sake, but also for your sake. It's like they would really like to help you. They would like to be um, there as a reflector to clarify things so you can have a better chance of making the decisions that you need to make in your love life that will have ripple effects over the rest of your life, okay? <clears throat> so with these two major arcana here, it feels to me like a lot of what's happening with you in your love life is very fated right now. It's very transformational for you, very fated and feeling like a good fortune for them, the significant other. How you feel that is a whole different thing, but from their perspective, this is almost inevitable and they're happy to be there with you. They are, they're looking, it's almost like they're really looking forward to the big shifts and the big changes that are inevitably going to happen. They're certainly not going to fight it. It looks to me that they're very eager to roll with it. Let's have a look at the core itself here. Oh, this is really encouraging. I'm happy for you. I'm really happy for you, Aries. It looks like the momentum from both sides, even though you are very different people, it looks to me like you, Aries, are on a, a you're living your life. They're living their life. It's a completely different life, two completely separate individuals in a significant relationship <clears throat> where like these fated experiences are going to happen. There's no way out of it, no reversal. A lot of a lot of radical, unpredictable upheaval in yourself, your core value, your core values of what is it you truly value in love and relationship and in yourself. And that's how that's going to affect your love life, so to speak. But with the eight, with the Knight of Cups here, it feels to me that the message is really, really loud, you, really, really loud and clear that you only have the best of intentions of bringing love forward bigger and better than whatever it was before and it's mutual it's from them from them it's almost like i've been trying to tell you i've been trying to tell you for so long don't you get it we're doing this we're going to walk away from anything and everything that is toxic and unhealthy in our lives you in your life the other in their lives and we're going to foster love we're going to make it a, a, almost like a mission here it's going to be very transformational for you, Aries, and it's going to put you in a position many times where you will balk and stall and maybe want to hold back, which is unusual for Aries. And it gives them the feeling like, well, maybe I am supposed to be the one who takes charge here and helps Aries to get through this. So that's that's not a bad thing. You know, it's good for you, Aries, to have someone at your side who's like almost like your equal, so to speak. And can help you get through this because it looks like radical shifts and changes that are almost at the point where it's intimidating for you. So if the relationship itself is all about fostering and bringing more love to the relationship itself by deliberate conscious choices, conscious efforts, that's a good thing. You almost can't go wrong from there, no matter what this card says. <laughs> I don't want to say it's, I told you so, but I told you so. So when you make it a deliberate effort to foster love and healing, guess what happens? We ask for the healing power of love to fill our relationships from up above. We ask for the healing power of love to fill our loved one from up above. We ask for the healing power of love to fill our home and lives and families from up above. We ask for the healing power of love to fill our life from up above. And kapoof, that's what you get. But it really is very convenient and handy for you, Aries, that it's happening in the context of a loving relationship. Because then you can be very, let's say, the embodiment of a loving, healing relationship. Like whatever's going on with you, Aries, deep inside that's really scaring you, 
you have every right to be scared and freaked out about the transformations and changes that are going to occur. And whatever is happening with them, whatever is turning them on and getting them so excited about doing all this and wanting to just go for it and feeling so fated and lucky to be with you to do this, it's great because, look, you've got the intentions are there, the, the deliberate intentions to foster, to plant seeds of love, nurture, foster, grow, and keep filling it up and filling it up and moving farther and farther, deliberately moving away from what doesn't work and deliberately moving towards what works. We ask for the healing power of love to fill our bodies from up above. We ask for the healing power of love to fill our minds from up above. We ask for the healing power of love to fill our hearts from up above. We ask for the healing power of love to fill our souls from up above. And then there you go. I don't want to mess it up. If I say anything more, I'll mess it up. All right. You can reinterpret however you want. And do your cross-watching, too. It's apparently it helps a lot. All right? So all the best. Thank you so much for visiting Aries. Have a super May. Please make the best of it. All right? Bye.